Hello, hello. Happy fall. I I got a little busy having a lot of fun doing podcasts with UG Rose and Poe, Boaten the Rockstar, and uh, both as a guest and as a host. And I really do appreciate them getting me on board like that and all the help they gave me in getting my first couple of episodes up. I have since paused because over the last few months, last two or three months, I've been exploring a few ideas. Um, among them are two that I just seem to come across wherever I turn. And one is communication and the other is relationships. And so I took a little cool off from producing content so that I could shut up and listen to what others had to say on these subjects and to take a little time to read and write and reflect. It's been a really interesting exploration because initially I thought I would do a video on each of those two topics, sort of thinking that they're separate ideas, but the more I looked into it, the more I realized how inextricable they are. It's it's sort of like body and mind. You don't really know where one ends and the other begins. It's, you know, show me on the doll. Where, where does, where's the line? Um, I haven't been able to find it because even when I'm talking about the relationship I have with myself or we have with ourselves in, in general, uh, communication is so important. It's, it's almost entirely communication. It, it really is. Being able to have good, healthy dialogue with yourself is, is in some cases all the difference between whether something is challenging or just a god-awful struggle. <laughs> um, and I've, I've really been struck by it so many times recently because in the past I had a rather nasty voice on board little hissing critical voice um, and it was exhausting it was exhausting to feel like I'm always at odds with myself with this now I don't hear voices it's not like that but we all have that inner voice that, that inner dialogue and um, yeah when when every thought is met with criticism and doubt and derision and just gnarliness it, it's tiring, it's, dis it's disheartening, it's discouraging. Um, and, and when an idea is met with a, at least a receptive voice, hmm, that's interesting, <laughs> it's a good start. Um, but also encouraging and guiding and, and kind and engaged in a healthy way, steering the process in a good direction. Um, everything, everything is just so much easier it really really makes all the difference and so that has me thinking a lot about how powerful communication is in relationships starting with this one and that it's a skill it's a skill we can learn so I've been kind of playing around with the idea of, of how do we learn to communicate with ourselves and each other better is this something maybe we need actual formal education for in schools? Is this a, like continuing ed, a, you know, adult class on adulting? I don't know. Um, but I find it, I find it curious that something so essential is so thoroughly overlooked. At one point in school there would be things like a debate team, uh, there'd probably be more public speaking, more, more presenting before the class kind of exercises, but it, that seems to have diminished over time as we move into an age of communication. We're here on our phones connecting to satellites that connect us to anything and everything around the world at the swipe of a screen. And so much is about communicating across those mediums. And, and yet, the soul, the heart and soul of communication seems to be lost in it. And I'm wondering if that's not contributing to some of the alienation people feel too. If, if you can't communicate with yourself, it's hard to know where you are, what you want, 
how to express that. And if you can't express that to others, it's really hard to come out where you need to be. It's, it's, there seems to be a great divide between what folks seem to want for themselves and the lives they're living. And I wonder how much of that could be, how much of that, that chasm could be closed with good communication. And so that's, that's been rattling around. And as I say this, I'm, I'm, I can't help but talk about relationships because that's how we relate. We, we have the meta, we have body language, expressions, tone of voice, facial expressions, micro expressions. We have, uh, we have ways of communicating that we're not even conscious of. Um, they're, they're little bio signals we send out that affect our physiology as we pass one another. So we do have that, but now that we're all remote and digital, we don't have that. We have no idea what, what information is lost in that. So we really, really do need to be able to use our big girl words. You know, like we really have to be able to talk to each other. And I'm not a particularly skilled speaker. I haven't had much occasion to speak with anyone for a long time. And yet I, I feel that it's so important that I continue to develop this ability because every time I'm able to make a connection with people and and get to know each other a little more just through basic communication the world doesn't feel so big and alien and and strange it feels like it's full of people who are living lives with a lot of the same desires and struggles that I have and and through that connection, I just feel it, it's humanizing. In, in an age where everything is sort of stripping us of our humanity and dividing us, it's, it's one of the powers we have to connect and relate, relate as in relationship, you know, you need to relate to have a relationship, um, and, and create understanding and, and form networks, social networks, networks to, promote ideas, networks to move uh, businesses along, whatever it might be. It's just the idea of being able to connect through language. The other topic to which I've been giving a, a lot of attention and thought is relationships. To discuss this, I have to back up a little bit. Going back to, I guess it was 2017, the question arose, what is mental health? We talk about mental health, and yet we kind of know we're not talking about the healthy parts. When we say mental health, we're talking about the lack thereof. And so I, I stopped and I said, well, what is, what's the goal? If you're, you're mentally unhealthy and we want to move you toward mental health, what is mental health? And I realized there's not really a standard anything for that. There's no standard. Um, so I kind of worked up. A concept of my own as a reference point just to say that ideally we have sort of a nice steady baseline and our um, our states sort of rise and fall relative to what's happening uh, sort of a proportionate shift with how much impact life experience has on us and then we kind of default back to that nice baseline where we're we're largely at ease and present and able to execute tasks and you know we're, we're feeling okay and um, I don't know I don't know if anybody else is inclined to recognize that as a good standard but it worked for me to say okay my goal is to establish where I want my baseline to be first of all uh, you know do I want to be kind of a high high energy person I can want all day I'm not a high energy person I can be bubbly but I run a little slow um, I said okay so not high energy and obviously you don't want to be kind of slumped and disengaged so you need a little bit of oomph and I was like all right so I'm looking for that that space between calm and humorous as sort of a baseline you know somewhere between like I'm really chilling and maybe I'm laughing my butt off and and that's sort of where I want to return to whenever I I'm not uh, subject to other forces I guess and uh, yeah then it was figuring out how to get to that place and 
you know, establish and maintain that for myself. And, and that was real helpful in, in working through some of the challenges I faced. So I, I thought about it again and I said, well, we talk a lot about relationships, but there's no standard model for what a healthy relationship is. Like, how do we, how do we get this far into the subject? We're like lost in the weeds about these things. And we don't really have a standard concept we can, we can work from. So again, I kind of applied that same thinking and I was like, well, what, you know, what is a healthy relationship? That wasn't as easy. That took a lot more looking around and understanding, you know, what, you know, to start with what are the problems and work your way back to then what would people prefer and how does it look when people accomplish that and what are the benefits and what are the challenges and so I'm still pretty lost out there walking around these ideas but one thing that really stood out to me was the difference between attachment and connection and that just kept coming up and so I got into it okay so I broke out my notes for this part because um, it was it was really interesting to realize that so much of what we think of as romance is kind of unhealthy attachment when you break it down. Uh, I think that might be part of why we struggle like we do, because we're brought up on these ideas, these sort of fairy tale ideas of what true love is, the, the romantic, you know, Disney package of whatever nonsense we've been sold on, which is actually kind of a newish idea. I, I seem to remember hearing that that only goes back a couple centuries and it was sort of a, a new wave of thinking. This isn't really how humans have done forever. It's, it's more of a literary notion. Um, romance actually is related to the word for story. So, you know, not only does it spring from sort of a literary source, but it also kind of refers to its um, fictional nature, I guess. Um, and yeah, as I, I went through and I tried to contrast attachment versus love, it, it was pretty stark. They're really almost diametrically opposed to one another. It's not like, oh, close enough. It's, it's almost antithetical. Um, so I thought I'd share some of the highlights from the list. There go the glasses. All right. Um, from the top. Attachment is more about what you get from another. It's more about filling a void. It's more goal-oriented. Um, whereas love is more about what you can give. It's, it's, it flows freely and it's more other-oriented. So you're, you're not focused on what's happening or what you're getting from it so much as how you're in relation to the other person and how you can be on an open circuit that you're both sort of flowing freely into each other that that surplus you have that you're hopefully fairly complete but you have this little bit of abundance you can pour into another person and hopefully they come complete with that abundance to pour into you and the circuit opens and there's just kind of a natural flow so I'm not talking about giving at one's own expense I'm talking about just being in a way of giving with another um, versus as always looking to see you know what's in it for me and how can I get my needs met my needs what about my needs <laughs> you're not gonna get them met with that mindset um, attachment is also more about what you think of a person or a scenario it's more mental it's more cerebral whereas love is more emotional more visceral it's it's more about what you feel towards a person or a scenario so that's a pretty good filter is how much is it you thinking about it like oh this person has this and they can do this for me and I'm gonna look like this with them and these types of things oh they'll fit my five-year plan <laughs> whatever it might be I don't mean to laugh I know some people are, are really trying to realize a vision that way but I think that trying to fit another person into that is you know, square peg and a round hole kind of approach to it because if you're trying to get from a person all the time, you're, you're going to drain them down and you're going to end up with not a person 
and the plan's going to fall apart at that point. Um, and yeah, it's 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 kind of stark contrast when you you look at it that way in terms of approaching with enough that you have a little extra to give, and and falling into that sort of free flowing giving that comes so easily. I mean, you, we do it all the time. I hope I hope you know we've all had the experience of smiling at a stranger and they smile back, and then you're in this kind of pleasant loop there's a little bit more to be had there because a couple of people threw in and and so the whole thing's a little nicer um yeah and it's it's just kind of moving toward that instead of trying to draw out the thing you need you can't draw out love from yourself or anyone else it's just not how love works um and it feeds the ego attachment really feeds the ego and it it leaves the drives unchecked it really kind of is like oh I got this so I'm something and, and now I can do this thing because it's like it almost lends entitlement in some way um, it, it it validates our lesser aspects I think and love actually kind of reduces the ego because it puts you in service to something larger um, in the way that okay relationships are obviously just the ongoing interactions we have with ourselves and with other people who um with whom in in whom we are invested and with whom we have a certain interdependency so uh, it could be family friends roommates co-workers whoever uh for the purposes of this i'm probably just going to speak in more romantic terms to keep it simple so um if you have a romantic relationship with someone and you're both working to keep that that third entity that is the relationship there's there's you the other and the relationship that emerges from between you guys putting that effort in and in in just being focused on that it it kind of um it it doesn't humble you exactly but it's the idea that you live that there are things that are greater than you and it, it keeps it it keeps reality in check nicely and you know where if you find yourself in a situation where somebody's wooing you or submitting to your every whim it kind of distorts your reality check pretty bad you know you can't what did you call it? Reality testing is, I think, the actual term for it. Is is then impaired. So, it's it's not as great as it sounds. We all like to be pampered and indulged a little bit, and on occasion, that's a lovely way to express, you know, delight, goodwill, love, whatever. But it's 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 like so much salt, so you don't ruin the dish, right? Um, what else? Oh, this is important. Attachment tends to be compulsive and unconscious. It, um, in contrast with love, tending to be a free will and intentional. So it's, it's more a, of a lust than a passion, right? Where you just kind of are at the mercy of your drives. And um, yeah, it's that I, I can't stop thinking about them. You know, like, well, you've been hijacked then. If you can't control your own mind. And it's, it's fun and it's heady and it's, delightful in small doses but it's not an approach to, to love and healthy relationships and life in general you got to sober up sometimes and and you know again come back to reality it's lovely here reality is really quite lovely no need to escape um, but yeah if you, you do feel the need to escape reality it's it's sort of an, an es escape in its own right and that can become compulsive. You get addicted to comfort and escapism and avoidance and, you know, it it feels good in the short term, but I think we pay far more than it's worth in the long run. And if we can act instead with free will and say, hey, you know, I'm, everything's going great. I'm feeling good. I'm enjoying the ride. Here's somebody who wants to take that ride with me. We've got a good thing between us and we've chosen to put some effort into that 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 
that's very sustainable and very healthy and nourishing. It's it's like good food versus junk food. You know, I know the chips are, are yummy. I'm all about the greasy, salty. But I also know that I need to have a complete diet. So, you know, it's... It, it's about trying to live on the more nourishing side of it. All right, uh, attachment also tends to be const uh, controlling and constrictive. It it needs to kind of cling and and, and steer things a certain way um, because it's inherently insecure. It's not built on something of substance, and I think we, if not consciously, at least intuitively, know that there's something wrong at the roots and that's where you see sort of um, people acting from jealousy. I'm not saying feeling jealousy is wrong but, but being consumed by it and acting from that place is problematic where it, you know, can impinge on others' freedom and well-being. Um, oh, I've lost my place. Here we go. Yeah, because it, it, it's inherently insecure. Whereas love is much more secure in, in that there's something of substance. The roots are, are solid. And, and so what grows from that can grow taller and wider. It's very liberating and expansive. It allows growth upward and outward and it doesn't fear that it's going to lose contact with the soil. It's, it's, it's in there. And so that's another clue is that love should feel very free. Whether you're together or apart, your connection endures. I keep saying love. I mean, you know, connection when I say this. It's, it's about, no, I mean love. But there are different kinds of love. There's fraternal love and there's love of chocolate cake. And, you know, there's connection with ourselves and others. And, yeah, the connection should endure. It should be able to withstand distance and time. You see this with friends. If, if you haven't seen friends in a while, sometimes you get back and you have, it's awkward. You have no, nothing in common anymore. You've grown in a certain direction, they've grown in a certain direction, or maybe not grown, whatever the case might be. And um, there's, there's really like no there there anymore. Whereas if um, you really had a connection with somebody, you can see them 5, 10, 30 years later and fall in like you were just talking about something five minutes ago. It, 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 that's something else I say here. Where is this? Um, at one point I say it, it's enduring. Love is enduring. Connection is enduring. Um, whereas attachment and infatuation, they're transient. They, they, they burn hot and fast, you know. <laughs> so that's that's another clue is that you're you're in love you're in connection because it it can withstand time and change uh going back up oh here's another important one because of the insecurity attachment tends to use relationships based on attachment the people in those relationships tend to use manipulation to achieve the desired outcome whereas if you're more secure in a connection, in love, using communication to achieve the desired outcome is enough. You really can just communicate openly and, and you're going to get better results because you can say what it is you want and you can hear what the other wants and you can figure out how to meet in the middle or indulge each other, whatever the case may be. So yeah, it's, it's, it's manipulation versus communication. How open, how clear can you be with a person? Um, you know, if it's all about playing the game, it's probably attachment and not love, right? Uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, the temporal element. Attachment is more focused on the future and or caught up in the past, whereas love is kind of a now thing. Like, it's because it's embodied, it's, again, it's visceral, it's now, and, and it's, it's nothing wrong with thinking ahead, of course, but it, you're not acting out issues from the past, you're not trying to get to an imagined future so that what you have now is acceptable. You have to be right with what you have now and not be 
moving towards, you know, some potential future where then you can be happy. Tomorrow never comes. <laughs> Tomorrow never comes. Uh, so that's another one. Where else are we? Still needing bifocals. All right. Attachment comes with expectation usually. Usually you're like, oh, this is going to fix something or, you know, this person's going to like complete me or this is going to let me live out my, you know, my five-year plan, whatever. There's this expectation on it going in. Like it's, it's so that you're, you're doing this so that. Whereas love kind of just comes with acceptance. It, it takes what comes as it comes and it responds to that in real time, hopefully with compassion and understanding and respect and and it really doesn't concern itself with what's what's happened before or how it's going to be in in terms that don't have any real bearing moving along um in attachment people will sometimes do what they want over what's good for the other there's there's a clinging again an insecure kind of clinging and a, a sort of hunger, a desperation to it, because it's compulsive, it's unconscious, and um, not necessarily meaning any harm, but just sort of selfishly being like, but I want it, and making choices that may cost the other, whereas in love, it's, it's more mutual, it's more about making sure everybody's needs are met, and, and sometimes being willing to do what is hard or unpleasant for oneself, if it's really what's best for the other. If you really love another person, sometimes you'll, you'll choose a path that is not your first choice, but you know that you need to provide for that and, and that doing what's best is, is the greater purpose, the larger goal. So in love, people will tend to be a little more self-sacrificing or at least inclined to compromise where if someone's merely attached, they're more likely to put their interests above the, the greater good, let's say. All right, carrying on. <laughs> oh, um, attachment tends to drive people to pursue satisfaction, again, like a hunger. And um, love tends to focus on building something substantial and through that fulfilling needs in a more meaningful way. Um, so it's, it's sort of trying to live fix to fix or just having what you need there readily available. Um, and, and so yeah, they're, they're really not the same. What else we got? Oh, um, the nature of the relationships are a little bit different too. If it's about attachment, people can tend to be more competitive. Um, and in love, people tend to be more cooperative. Another difference would be that things tend to be more negotiated or one-sided in attachment relationships, where in love, it, it what did I say here? <laughs> it's like a bifocals. Um, yeah, the partners tend to be more generous and, and mutual. It's, it's more balanced, and, and I'd say that the other way is a bit unstable. You know, let's contrast unstable to balanced in that one, because if you're always trying to get your needs met, you know, there's that causes some of the competition, and you can't be in competition with your teammates. That's not how that works. You're supposed to be working together against the opposition or with the other forces, but not against each other. Um, so if you're, you're negotiating, you're not really in sync. You're, you're not really working from a place of real connection and love. Um, what else? I think I skipped one. Oh, they also tend to fall into conflict over disagreements. A disagreement is a fight. It's an argument. It's, it's passionate. It's tumultuous. It's sullen. It's whatever it is. It's, it's not about being able to agree to disagree. Whereas in love, <laughs> I'm so blind. <laughs> 
yeah, tend to be compassionate and, and respectful despite the disagreement. They're trying to come to understand each other's views and either, you know, see the other's perspective and maybe move toward it or at least respect it. You know, there's a agree to disagree and you write back to, you know, cuddling up or asking them to pass the salt or life just goes on. It's not a cause for, for drama and turmoil. Uh, so that's another feature. Hmm. Oh, okay. Attachment relationships are attached to ideas more than realities. There's something vaguely delusional. It's kind of like you've seen this thing, you've taken a picture of it, you want to put it in the frame and you want to keep it there. And so it gets real stagnant. Um, whereas in love, you're kind of, again, taking it as it comes, you're moving with it. It's, you, you don't want to put the river in a frame. You let the river flow. You swim in the river, you sit by the river, you don't put it in a frame and try to make it this, this fixed thing. It, it's allowed to, to flow and grow. Uh, what did I say on the other side? Yeah, a love, loving relationships are more synergistic and adaptive. They, they, they're fluid. Like I said, they're more like a river than a picture in a frame. And so since life goes on and people grow and change, sometimes they revert. Sometimes that's the change you get. Um, it, you know, it's, you can't really fix a thing to be set just so and expect it to stay thus, you know, and then in an effort to keep it that way, there's going to be conflict and disappointment. Whereas if you understand it's, it's always going to be flowing, it's always going to be moving, and you learn to move with it, there'll be no friction. It'll just be movement. And again, I think there's a pretty substantial difference there. And let's see. Yeah, we can fix the sadness. Oh, and, and really, one that gets a lot of people into trouble is the difference between attachment being performative and love being sincere. <laughs> so like, we often want to go out and, yes, we put our best foot forward, but this goes back to me talking about how we edit out so much of what makes us interesting and, and unique. And we sort of come with, uh, I've been listening to Stéphane Le Bossier, and he, he talks about how we come with our representatives to, to meet a potential love interest. And we, if we don't start to show ourselves through that and flesh that out to a whole picture, then all a person has is the representative. And then, because that's not really the whole picture, and that is what somebody's now become attracted to or engaged with, if you kind of have to keep up the act, which you can't. So inevitably, it falls apart. But in the meantime, there's this struggle. You don't even get to be there and enjoy it because you're always, always in character, always doing the thing. And it's, it's unnatural and it doesn't allow real connection to, to find roots there at all. Um, and in love, people are willing to be vulnerable. You have to be vulnerable. So you're, you're exposing more of yourself. You're, you're coming as a more complete package, flaws and all. And, and again, what we often think of as flaws, sometimes other people find endearing. I mean, I, I've, I've fallen over at some of the things people have called cute that I'm like, that's on my hit list. <laughs> so, you know, to each his own. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder and taking the chance to expose ourselves in that way, to be sort of naked emotionally and, and to, to put our representatives aside and, and to really come forth and say, okay, this is me, you know, I mean, we're real good at getting naked physically. It, this is, you know, this is where a lot of people start, send nudes, you know, and then it, it, you have to work back and see if you can get naked emotionally. And I, I think that's a little bit of putting the cart before the horse because, you know, there's something common about bodies. There is, is as wonderful and quirky and unique as everybody is. And as much as I appreciate what all the things a body does, um, there's something common about it. There's something missing until, you, you know, it's 
filled out by the person who lives there and it's hard to have a real spark with a body like then then why not just invest in a fancy doll you know get some batteries whatever it's it's if it's about being with a person you need to know the person so yeah it in love there really is something more sincere and authentic and raw and you know you don't have to keep up the act you know you know each other's quirks and foibles and you know nasty habits whatever it might be and and you love each other anyway i heard i heard once that love is when i'm gonna butcher this Love is when people know you and love you anyway, or something like that. It's about like, they actually know what a mess you are and they love you anyway. They, they love the whole thing. And there's really nothing like that. There's putting on an act and being loved for how good of a performance you can turn in. It's not love. It's hollow and it's false. And it's always gonna disappoint. And it's a lot of energy to end up that disappointed. So. I don't know, I'm revisiting a lot of the ideas we have about romantic love and, and I'm thinking maybe we, we need to think in different terms and say attachment relationships versus love or connection relationships um, and sort of distinguish what it is we're looking for because, you know, there is something to be said for the, the heady delirium of being slightly delusional with someone, not, not knocking it. Um, but again, it's not a, a real great life strategy for stability and success and well-being. It, it falls quite a bit short of that. And so, yeah, I found this really intriguing. I found it really illuminating because we don't really take the time to discuss like what is what from what, right? Which is one big mess in our head where we, we're like, I'm crazy about them. It's love. I'm like, pick one. <laughs> Pick one. You gotta be sane to do love properly. You gotta have some healing done. You know, you gotta be at some 70, 80% healed and at least be able to tell your partner, like, this is the other 20, 30% I'm coming with and I'm still working on it. And what you got, maybe we work on it together. You know, that's, that's probably the best strategy if you want true love. Um, I think the rest is, is the stuff of fairy tales and at some point, we outgrow fairy tales, right? And we move out into the world that's full of real magic and we live there. I hope, I hope, I hope we can learn to move away from this Disney princess thinking and, and find a little more clarity, a little more lucidity about this because so many people are hurting and so many people are wanting for love and I think we're, we're beaten down, we're wounded, we're afraid, and, and then we're confused because we don't have people breaking this down for us. So I hope that's a step in the right direction and is of some value because I did find quite a few articles online, didn't blow the doors off, but I found barely any videos on YouTube. I, I'm like, YouTube, you can find endless videos on almost anything, but when I, I put in like love versus attachment or connection versus attachment really didn't get a lot of results so I'm gonna try to contribute to the, the pool of perspective I suppose I I don't have much for it but I I was struck by what a contrast between what love is and what we think it is and I'm hoping that if we can sort that out maybe we'll have better odds at bringing people back together because that's that's a true desire of mine i hate seeing our people broken apart especially along lines of sex that's we have half our species turned against half of our species we're we're so easy we're so easy we're so the wrong kind of vulnerable right now we're vulnerable to predation exploitation attack it's it's this being divided and, and feeling alienated and I think the antidote is ultimately learning to one communicate with ourselves two build good relationships with ourselves three learn to have good relationships with other others and four work through those relationships to weave our species back together we're we're too fragmented and 
we've got so much more to offer than this. And so the exploration continues. Okay, well, I sure appreciate you coming along for the ride as I attempt to uh, explore the mysteries of love and uh, untangle some of these knots, hoping we can get to a better way with each other and just live in a more pleasant world. Hmm? <laughs> this doesn't seem to be working out so well. I think it's time for a new plan and I don't have one, but I'm hoping that more people will join in the discussion and together we can brainstorm something better into being. Until then, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give a like. If you want more of this madness, subscribe, and I'll do my best to bring more as soon as possible. It's kind of ad hoc. I'm really just a lady with a phone. That's all. All of this is just a lady with a phone. So it happens when it happens, and I'm trying to increase the frequency and bring a little more. So I hope you'll stay tuned and join again. Thank you.